We are now live. So I'd like to thank those of you that have joined us and are watching it live on YouTube. I know we have uh, two guests in the, the room with us. We have Brad in Cape Town and Anne and her students in Australia. And of course, we have our special guest, Kai Xian, who is a master craftsman. <laughs> and what he has done is he, he takes cardboard and he creates the most incredible pieces of art using um, creativity, artistic skill. I'd like to think that he's using mathematics as well. And, and hopefully, we'll get a little bit of insight into what he's managed to put together. And just some background on, on Kai Xian. Um, from what I can understand, he is studying um, art at a very well-known art school in Taiwan. It is the Stan Winston Art School, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And basically, as far as I understand, the founder of the school um, was actually a special effects person for movies in Hollywood and put together some interesting pieces, and, and maybe Kai can share some of that information with us. But um, I came across Kai Shan's work on, on Facebook. Someone posted an article about the Taiwanese Tony Stark and of course I thought that would be quite a cool thing to to meet someone who has actually built an entire suit it looks like the Iron Man suit and he's done it purely out of cardboard and I think that uh, Kai's famous line was that Tony Stark's suit cost over a billion dollars but my suit was free, well, almost free. <laughs> so what I'd like to do is, is ask Kai Shan just to tell us a little bit about himself, um, what he's doing and, and whereabout he lives, and then we're going to ask him some interesting questions about the work that he does. So over to you, Kai. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to be typing one or two questions because sometimes uh, the accent is difficult for Kai to, to catch on to. There you go. Hello, everybody. My name is Kai Shan Chong, and I come from Taiwan. <laughs> How old are you? Twenty one this year. Twenty one this year, and right. and how long have you been interested in? Um, in art, in, in making cardboard sculpture. Cardboard sculpture. Mm. Almost four year or five years. So this is just four years of experience and you're already doing all this? In cardboard. Uh, okay, but now when, when did your passion for, for working with cardboard start? Okay, um, sorry. When Okay, we're just typing in some of the questions because it's easier to read the English. Working how old? Maybe Which, uh, seventeen or sixteen. Okay, so, so when you were around about 16, that's when you started to realize that working with cardboard was something very exciting. Okay, right. so, so all of your things that you've done literally have only come in the last four years, and you've done the most amazing work. Now, if I mm -hmm. remember correctly, your first piece of artwork was a dragon. Is that correct? You go on. Your, was it, okay. how, how big was the dragon? Almost fifty centimeter tall. 
And do you have it there with you? Yes. Can we have a look at it? Yes. Okay, so this is this is Kai Shen's first um, experience in in terms of uh, designing and sculpting cardboard. And we're going to have a look at his dragon. Wow. And you can see the detail is incredible. That is amazing. And of course, everything that he makes, he uses cardboard. And, and, and I asked him a little bit earlier, um, how does he get the, 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 the pieces of cardboard and that type of thing to, to stick together? And uh, he was telling me that he uses a glue gun and he uses um, super glue as well. So that's purely by cutting cardboard and using a glue gun and super glue, which is incredible. So we'll be taking lots of photos of this as well, of course. We like to capture all these moments. That is incredible. How long did it take you to make? I make bodies finish in two weeks. But it probably two weeks. is the problem is the uh, I don't know how to talk about the scales. The scales. Mm -hmm. Right. How, how did you make the scales? I use hmm. Oh, okay. It's like um, a, almost like a bus ticket uh, clicker. <laughs> when you when you get your bus ticket, they stamp your bus ticket. Right. So the thing makes the little circles, and and you did individually all over like confetti. Right. Wow. So that must have taken, and that took two weeks. Body in two weeks by tap the. This <laughs> I, I, scale. I call scale. Yeah, right. that is amazing. I make make it in almost a year. Okay, so that part took a long time. Yes. Wow, that is incredible. Sure. And then obviously, once you made your first thing, which was a a, a dragon. Right. What I find interesting is that. Um, you then started moving on to more exciting things. And we did speak a little bit earlier, and we spoke about the kinds of movies that you like to watch. And I spoke to you about um, the sci-fi movies, like um, Iron Man and, and superhero movies and, and space yeah. movies. So you've obviously started making a few things uh, related to that theme. Um, if I recall correctly, you, you did make a character from the Transformers movie. Yes. W which character did you make? I made Optimus Prime. Do you want to see? Optimus okay. Prime. I would love to see Optimus yes. Prime. Now you'll notice that Kai Shen is, is running out of space in his room for all the things that he is busy making, but wow, this is just insane. Look at this. So this is using cardboard and plastic, is that correct? Yes. And how long did this take you to make? In, in two weeks. Three weeks? Yes. Two weeks. Two weeks. Wow. So in two weeks, you I mean, you, you started off when you were 17. You, you've made yourself this dragon, which is incredibly impressive. And then you, you start making things like Optimus Prime. Um, but then, from what I can gather, um, you did a, a previous interview where someone thought that you had a pet. And you had to show them that the pet was actually made out of cardboard. And it was your, your bearded dragon, the one that um, it, it had the, 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 the coloring. And I thought that maybe you had painted it. And then you told me that it wasn't about the paint, it's about the way the glue goes on the cardboard, it, it gives it a certain shading or a texture. 
So can we have a look at, at, at your bearded dragon? Have you, have you got that with you? The lizard. Okay, he's going to fish it. I saw some pictures of it. I think it looks amazing. Okay, have a look at this. This is just... Tell me that that does not look real. I mean, that is just insane. Wow. And the coloring is purely from using the glue. When you place glue on the cardboard, it obviously makes dark patches. But, wow. I mean, and in Australia, let's be honest, that does look like a real bearded dragon, doesn't it? <laughs> We've got a thumbs up over there. <laughs> that is just fantastic. Um, Brad, you wanted to know what, what gave you the idea to use cardboard and why cardboard? So, of all the materials that you use, why did you choose cardboard? Mm. Because it's free. <laughs> That's good enough for me. <laughs> that I is... can do, do many work without the money, it's, and it's good. <laughs> Well, from a creative point of view and, and from a mathematical point of view, the fact that, that cardboard is free is, is yeah. a, it means that anyone in the world can have access to the art. And I think cost, as Anne said, cost is, is definitely a factor, especially when you're young. Um, and the other thing is that um, cardboard allows you to create so many things that yeah. um, just you, you're only limited by your imagination. Yes, and I think that you've obviously got quite a, a vivid imagination. Now, I'm a big fan of dinosaurs, and I noticed in the background you 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 made some uh, large skeleton heads of of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Is that correct? Yes. Can we have a look at that, please? That is fantastic. Oh, that's so good. Wow. Wait a minute. He's going to have to use... <laughs> He's going to have to find a way to... Sure, look at this. There we go. Just look at this. This is unbelievable. Wow. Now, where did you get? I mean, you can you can get a photograph of the internet of the jaws, but where did you actually see? I mean, did you go to the museum to get ideas for this, or was it purely from photographs? I will go to the museum to watch some real okay, so <laughs> Wow. And is that a life size? Is that the correct size or, or is that just a smaller version? It's a small version. Oh, it's a smaller version. Okay, so the, the bigger the, the actual skeleton is, is much bigger than that. And then you also did a prehistoric bird, the pterodactyl. Let's have a look at that. You can see that space is very limited in <laughs> Kai Xiang's room. <laughs> Look. Wow. That is amazing. And just to think that this is all made out of cardboard. Right. And available anywhere. <laughs> it's just phenomenal. How long did it take you to make the, the Tyrannosaurus Rex and the Pterodactyl? About two or three months. Two or three months. Right. And if you were going to make a proper life size structure out of cardboard of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, um, I mean, would, would that be something that would interest you to make the full Tyrannosaurus Rex? 
or were you only focused on making the skull? You mean? Um, are you interested in making the full T Rex? Yes. Oh, you are. Because, I mean, we, we spoke a little bit earlier about, you know, what you would be doing with your art, and, and we spoke about maybe having an exhibition or a show where people could actually come along and, and actually see all of your artwork in one place, which I think would be amazing. So, but now, cardboard is not the only thing that you've worked with. You, you do right. make other things as well. Can you give us an example of something else that you've done besides using cardboard? You mean the uh, cover work or other work? Well, you, 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 you've done some other artwork where you never use cardboard. Uh, maybe an aliens character? Ah, let's have a look at that. Now, I'm not going to say what you've used to make it. I want those who are watching it live on YouTube and, and the students in, in Anne's class will hopefully have a look at this and see if they can guess what the main building ingredients are or the tools that we used to make this particular character. Now if you have a look at this, you would know straight away that this is a character from the, the Aliens movie. Look at that. And cardboard was not used to make this one. Wow, that is just absolutely incredible. So Anne, do any of your students know what, what he used to make that particular uh, creature? She's just getting some feedback from her students to find out if any of them know what he used to make that alien creature. He's going to type that in. Plastic and duct tape. The students think that you use plastic and duct tape. Almost, almost. The correct answer is, of course, I'll type it in for you. Yes. Drinking straws. And are those black colored drinking straws, or did you did you actually color those to make it to make it look like that? The drinking straw is already black. Oh, the drinking straw is already black. Yes. Wow. I mean, that that really is an authentic <laughs> alien creature from the movie. That is just amazing. Wow. And the detail. So obviously, the you use straws that have got the little um, the little ribs in it, or yes. did you make those little round parts on the straw? Right. Oh, okay. Was it those straws? You know the ones that bend. Was it a bendy straw? Yes. You can see the yes. But, oh, you can see it's got the creases there. Okay. Okay. There we go. That is very cool. Amazing, amazing. So now, of course, the, a lot of people you know, are, are talking about your, your alien creatures and your dinosaurs and your transformers, but you've also done a magnificent sculpture of a horse. Oh, okay. Do you have the sculpture of the horse? Yes. This impressed me when I saw this because I couldn't believe how magnificent this piece of art is. I mean, this this in itself is just exquisite to look at. And I mean, we, we now know that, that uh, he is using cardboard, but 
just look at the detail that goes into this. Look at that. Uh, we're going to get a photograph of that one. That is just beautiful. Wow. And how long did that take you to make? In three days. What? Three days. Right. Four weeks. <sighs> My life is in Was it three days or three weeks? Yes. Uh, days or weeks? Which one was it? Uh, let me type it in. Three days or let's see if you got that. Three days. Three days. Right. How is that even possible? Do you find that that since you've started, you are getting faster at doing the work? Sorry again. Um, faster and maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, I mean, if you can do that in three days, that yeah. really is on another level. I mean, I'm I'm blown away. By that, I mean, if, if you were to go into an expensive gallery, you, I mean, to see something like that would be very impressive. And this took you three days. Right. Wow. Now, you see, when I, when I asked Kai a little bit earlier, Kai, and I said to him, are you a big fan of mathematics? He basically said to me that he's, he's not a big fan of doing sums and that type of thing, but he's a very big fan of problem solving because... In order to make these things, um, a lot of the, the projects that he puts together, you know, he's got a concept in his head. He, you know, some of the one, some of the projects he, he actually does a sketch and he draws the picture and then he tries to make it from there. But for some of the projects, he's got a sketch in his head and he works according to that. And then sometimes when you're putting things together, they don't always go the way you want. So you have to do problem solving. And, and he loves that aspect of being creative. Um, I know that Anne wants to know, are you selling any of your artwork? Is any of your stuff for sale? No. No, he's not selling no. yet. Yet. We're still working on it. <laughs> I'm busy chatting to him with, to, to give him a couple of ideas of, of how he can maybe um, get cardboard kits out to, to schools around the world where they could actually order the kits and actually build their own little things um, using simple instructions. But hopefully that will be our, our Kickstarter project. But um, what I do want to know is that you are currently working on um, an exciting project for you. It's, it's obviously something that, that you personally are interested in, and that is a monster from a well-known movie. What what the the name of the monster starts with a G? God, God. God. Anyone I guess Godzilla. <laughs> but now, of course, Godzilla. Different movies have created different images of Godzilla. So so Kai Xian has now created his own version of what he thinks Godzilla should look like, and. Right now, it's only in stages. It, I, he hasn't finished it yet, but we have the the tail. Oh, we have the head as well. I, I, you've got the head. Let's have a look at that. That is incredible. And Bradley wanted to know um, if if Kaishen was going to paint. Um, I, I think you, you're assuming that if he's going to paint any of his cardboard structures. And uh, what, what Kai Shen told me is that he prefers not to paint them because he wants people to see that it is cardboard and that is the medium that is used. And I right. think that that is just incredible. I think that, that when you see the cardboard and you can see the color of it and the texture, 
you appreciate that it's not just a paper mache mold or, or plastic, that it's actually something that was made by hand, which I admire very much. But of course, I mean, you've, you've done other things, you've done little creatures, you've done ants. Um, you've got a Facebook page where you show people a lot of the artwork that you do, and on the YouTube channel I have put a link to your Facebook page if people want to go and have a look at um, the, the, the daily postings that you put up of things that you've created. But recently, um, I don't know if you have it with, with you, you found some grass and you turned yes. that into a bird. Do you have that right. with you? Sorry, is, that is in my home. Oh, okay, so you don't have that with you. All right. So but the, I have another bird. You've got another bird. Can we have a look at that one? Okay. So but what I found interesting was that Kai Shan was able to take grass and just look at the grass and turn it into a bird which looked absolutely awesome. Now this one is made out of cardboard, is that correct? Right. Just have a look at the detail of this. This is incredible. And I and I assume that to get the feathers, you had to cut, 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 find little slices. Yes. Wow, look at that. That is amazing. And is that the skeleton, oh, that's the, the skull. Yes, bird skull. Wow. And if you actually look at the bird, did you paint this one, or was that, how did you get the white and the gray? White is the A4 paper, print paper. Oh. Yes. Okay, so you, you blended cardboard and paper to, to get that. Yes. Sure. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm absolutely blown away. <laughs> I think that is absolutely fantastic. Um, but now the big thing is, of course, what, what, what brought most people's attention was the fact that you are the Taiwanese Tony Stark. And that is because you have created one of the most awesome-looking Iron Man suits I have ever seen. So... From what I hear, it is a life-size suit that you can actually climb into, which would take quite a while to do. But just judging by the way you've built it, it looks like all the parts move, and you could probably move the legs and that type of thing. I mean, the helmet, and that was all made out of cardboard. Okay, so he's going to demonstrate <laughs> some of the parts. Have a look at that. That is just incredible. And if you have a look, um, I don't know if you guys can see it, but on the chest of the suit is the, the center part that is where the, um, the heart of Iron Man is. And then on his hands as well, he's got those little power things. Um, I wasn't sure if... if uh, Kaishan had put LEDs in them, but um, just look at that. That is just incredible. I cannot think of a single child who wouldn't want to wear one of those to a fancy dress, to school or to a party. That is just incredible. How long did Iron Man take you to do? About uh, uh, almost a year because I... A I make many stuff in in the same time. Okay, so, so what I can understand because you're studying, all of this stuff gets done in your spare time. So you you only do that when you when you've got free time. You don't really do it because you've obviously got to study for school and, and do your own projects and that type of thing. Um, but I but I do know that Kai Xian has a secret ability. It appears that I'm not the only person who stays up until 4 or 5 in the morning. Um, Kai Xian actually is up at that time of morning, and I assume that that's when he's probably working on some of his art. Is that correct? Yes. You're working early in the morning because no one is there to disturb you, and it's quiet and you can get a lot of work done. I love it. 
We're only 24 hours in a day, unfortunately. We need a few more, but but we'll settle for 24. 24 is good. So now, Anne, do you guys have any questions? Or, or, or Brad, do you have any questions for, for Kai Shan in terms of some of the stuff that he's done or created? So Anne's just going to ask her students if any of them have any questions for you. Okay. Um, we can't hear you, Anne. You, Anne, I, I think you're muted. No, we've got no sound coming from Anne. Maybe Anne can type her question. Okay. <laughs> She's just going to ask a question by typing it. Um, what will be the next project, the big one? What's coming next? Uh, it's called Godzilla. I, I haven't finished it. Okay, so you're still working on, on Godzilla, okay. And then after Godzilla? What are you going to do after Godzilla? I'm not sure, but maybe another dinosaur. Another dinosaur. I, I like what I'm hearing here. This is very exciting. And then Anne wants to know, where do you get all your ideas from? Where do the, where do the ideas come from? Oh, I, oh, I, my work is what I love. Mm -hmm. That's what I like to hear. So you take things that you're passionate about or things that you love, and then, because you love those things so much, the ideas just come to you. Yes. Very cool. And then Anne also wants to know, um, well, we know that you work with plastic. We know that you work with cardboard and paper. What other materials do you work with? Material. Um, do you use metal? Do you use... Um, Another material. Mm -hmm. Do you use... Like, do you use glass? Do you use... I mean, we know that you've used grass to make the bird. What other things have you used to make your, your uh, statues? Uh, here. It's the new one. Wow. Just check this out. Now, don't tell them what it's made from yet. I want them to guess. You okay. guys, guess what he used to make this monster-looking fish. Oh, it's not a monster-looking fish. From the one side, it looks like a monster. The other side, looks like a perfect skeleton of a fish. That is just incredible. Now, do you know what he made it from? Have a look. He's giving you a hint. Okay, so now the students are busy thinking about it. Brad, have you got any ideas? Oh, oh apparently there's a delay. There's a delay from, from this to YouTube. There's a slight delay. So they're just waiting to see the pictures on there. Okay, they've got it. And now they're going to try and guess what you used to make that fish. Wow. Aluminium? Um... Were you thinking maybe from coke tins and that type of thing, Anne? Okay, so so she was thinking that maybe you took some some uh, coke tan, uh, coke cans and or you know soda cans and then you open them up and and sliced them up and and there was another suggestion of maybe wire, perhaps from coat hangers or something. Um, tell them what. Where did you get that from? Check this out. Yeah. An umbrella. How is that? The, the, those are the spikes that hold up the umbrella, and he has taken all of those, and he has created that magnificent fish. 
from an umbrella. Yes. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that is just unbelievable. <laughs> That's fantastic. So now we know that he works with umbrellas, he works with grass, he works with cardboard, um, he has worked with straws. Have you worked with clay? Clay. Not, not have you done anything with clay? But I still have some. Okay. He's done some things in clay. Let's have a look. It's Oh, is this Godzilla, like a smaller version? Yes, and Iron Man. Oh, and Iron Man there. Wow. That is just incredible. So it's, it's very clear that, he, that, that you've gotten uh, who wins between Iron Man and Godzilla. Yes. So, so who is strong, Iron Man or Godzilla? Maybe Godzilla. <laughs> Maybe Godzilla. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> um, there was another question. Did you study art at school? Yes, now. Only now, but when you were at, at school, at high school, did you do art as well? No. Only I mean, you. Only in uh, college. College. So, so you you only literally started doing art when you got to finish school, and you're creating all of this now. That is just. I I creating the work in, all the time, but I only learn learn uh, art in the university. So if you had learned art at a much younger age, then you would need a house to put all your artwork in. Is that right? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. And then Brady, you want to know, um, do you have any role models, uh, people that influence you, people that you, you look at their art and think, that's a good idea, I want to do stuff like that. Who are the people that you look up to? You mean they want me to do something? Um, maybe, okay, I'll type it for you. Oh. Who inspires you? Okay. So hmm. who, who are the people that inspire you? Not really look up to. Mm -hmm. So for you, it's I mean, it's all coming from yourself. Yes, I I love doing this work. Sure, right. that is amazing. So so an an important message is that you know even if you don't have role models or, or people to uh to to give you ideas, for you it's about if you're passionate about something. It comes from inside, and I think that that is amazing. Wow. Okay, so so Kai Shen is is not only a talented artist, but but very creative. How did you come up with the idea of using an umbrella to make the fish? I mean, what was the connection? Did you just see an umbrella one day and go, hmm, why did I use that to make a fish? Or did you look at the skeleton of a fish and go? Those parts look like they come from an umbrella. How how did you get the two to connect? Because I I love animal. I love animal and I will see what because the umbrella can do this. I mean, I mean. Uh -huh. That looks like a spider. Right, or the fish, fish. Oh, I see what you're saying. The gills. So, so, so you always see a connection between things around you and how they relate yes. to animals. Right. Wow. And I then I to make animal. 
And I did notice that you had a lion somewhere on the yeah. side. But can we have a look at that? That is incredible. Now, you do realize that you're going to have to come visit South Africa one day because we have many, many lions here. And you can come and see them in real life. <laughs> cool. That is just unbelievable. How long did the lion take you to make? Three nights. Three nights? Yes. I mean, it's not really fair that, that you can do this. <laughs> I mean, some of us, if you give us cardboard and a pair of scissors, I mean, I would make a lion, but it would look like a lion after it's been attacked. I would never be able to actually do something. I mean, that's just, I mean, yeah, I'm jealous. I'm very jealous that you have this wonderful skill. But I'm very glad that you are happy to share it with people because maybe there are young people out there who are now looking at your work thinking, hey, I can afford cardboard. Cardboard is free. I like yeah. art. I like animals. Maybe this is something that I want to do. So now, did you draw a sketch of the lion before you started, or did it just come from your head? Well, ah, that looks like a character from Disney. Mufasa uh -huh. from The Lion King. <laughs> Was that from the Lion King? What? Was, was that from the movie The Lion King, Mufasa? Mm, not at all. <laughs> uh, just from Google? Yes, real lion. When, when I asked Kai Chen, I asked him, where, where does he get, like, for example, he has seen the movie Iron Man many, many times, but obviously that's not always enough to get to build the structure. So he went on to Google, downloaded uh, a whole bunch of pictures to look at, and that allowed him to, to get a better understanding of what the Iron Man suit should look like. Uh, that's a perfect photograph there. <laughs> I, I'm just absolutely blown away at, at the, the the range of items. I mean, you're making animals, you're making creatures, you're making dinosaurs, science fiction, aliens. Um, if I remember correctly, you also made an ant, a large ant. Do you have that? Wow. Just check this out. I think this would be a, a, a teacher's dream to work with structures that size. Amazing. So you clearly are a big fan of animals because animals feature in most of your artwork. Yes. So, and then I asked you earlier, um, before we, we, we went live, I wanted to know if you were planning to, let's just get a photograph of you smiling like that. Ready? Lovely. Um, I asked you earlier, sorry? This is Taiwan. Oh, the... that is Taiwan. That is yes. very cool. get a picture of that so we can email that to you and put it on our website. Um, I think that, that just looking at all the artwork, um, it's clear that you obviously have a passion for art and for animals, and I asked if maybe your future was going to be in the movie industry, creating props and, and creatures for set designs and stuff. Is that something that would interest you? Oh, wow. Look at that. 
But I, I do notice that you, you're quite fascinated with the skeletons of a lot of creatures. Yes. Why is that? Mm, I don't know. I think that is natural, natural art. The natural art. That's yeah, very cool. Beautiful and I don't know. <laughs> I like it. We agree with you. We agree with you. Um, Brady wanted to know, can you talk a bit about your design process? So I, when I spoke to you earlier, I know that I asked, do you first do a sketch and then take your sketch and make and then change and then adapt it? Or do you just take an idea from your head, grab some cardboard, a pair of scissors, and, and just start cutting and gluing, and then it's ready three days later? Is that how you do it, or, or do you do a little bit of planning first? A little, little planning. Very, very almost, this is aliens. Okay, let's have a look. That was your planning for the alien. Oh, yes. That is amazing. And then you created that straw structure from that planning. Yes, and and that was the skull of the pterodactyl. Yes, and the bird. And the bird as well. Yes, that is just unreal. I, I, I mean, I, for the rest of you, I'm sure that you're busy watching this thinking, I mean, he's done a very simple sketch, but yet the structure that he made is a thousand times better. <laughs> it's just, it's incredible how you translate the, the simple drawing into the complicated artwork. And, and clearly, to, to do that sort of thing, you obviously need a lot of time to concentrate and you need time where you're not being disturbed all the time. So I understand why you're working until 3 or 4 in the morning. That would make absolute yeah. sense to me. Sure. All right. Well, we, we, we want to get close to finishing off. So we, we've, we've spoken a little bit about the, the artwork that you've done. Um, we've, we've touched on you know, your, your next project, which is you're going to be completing the Godzilla. And we've, we've looked at some of your other things. What is your favorite piece of all the things that you've done? What is your favorite? Everything. They are all my favorite. <laughs> they are all. You see now, that's fantastic. That everything is his favorite. <laughs> I mean, and and a couple of times people people have been asking, you know, are you looking to to sell? your artwork and I can see that you, you you hold everything very dear to you but if if it came to the, a chance to to make money out of it would you consider making artwork for money maybe <laughs> okay I want so to have a exhibition first an exhibition? Mm -hmm. then I will sell maybe I will sell my work okay but I want to have an uh, exhibition first. They'll, they'll, they'll first be, I mean, I, I'm assuming there'll be some pieces that are too sentimental or too valuable to sell, like your dragon. I'm not sure if that would be something that you would sell because that was your first piece and you'd probably want to keep that. But of course, the Iron Man, I'm sure yeah. there'd be lots of people who'd be interested in an, an Iron Man <laughs> suit like that. And then Brady wants to know, do you make things for other people? So if someone says to you, here is uh, $500, can you make me a bird? I mean, do you make things for other people or do you just do it only for your own enjoyment? A little. Not many. Really Not a little. Many. little. <laughs> okay. Because I mean, I can imagine it's time consuming and, and you're still you know, studying at the moment, so it's quite difficult. But when you finish studying, it's something that you could go into full time and actually make lots of. 
And, right. and what about training? Have you ever considered running workshops to train people on how to work with cardboard? Training? I, I'm not sure if I don't have the time to do this. But the people have the question will ask me in the Facebook. Aha. But now, if, for example, there were art teachers from around the world, and they <laughs> want to learn how to make, I don't know, basic or cutting the cardboard and, and all those sorts of things, um, would you consider running a workshop online to show them the tools and, and the basics of how to make things out of cardboard? Maybe I will take a video. That would be good. Yes. And then <laughs> put them on, on YouTube. I, what, I mean, what yes. you could do is if you took video of you making something and then you speed up the video, people can actually right. see the process of what it was I'm that you were making. Planning on this. Planning. I'm we are loving this idea. This is a very good idea because you know we we come from a background of, of teachers and, and and as you know I work with a lot of teachers from around the world and we love sharing ideas but learning from others and I think that you know when when I asked you you know who who inspires you who are your role models and you said that it comes from you there are a lot of people who are going to look up to you and say that you are their role model that they want to be like you. They want to make art like you. They want to be passionate about art. They want to be able to spend three days and make the most beautiful lions and horses <laughs> with no effort whatsoever. And I'm sure that, that you know, you, you've given them a lot of hope that you don't have to spend money to make it. And, and I, I would assume that, that it's, you know, if, you, if you start off, you are going to make mistakes. And it might not always be perfect, but you can just work at it all the time. And eventually, I mean, you started when you were only 17, and that gives you four years to make all that stuff. That is just incredible. So it just lets people know that even if they didn't do art at school, when they finish school, if they are passionate about it, there's no reason why they can't still go into art and, and make amazing things. And I asked you earlier, are you a good painter? Because generally when someone is artistic and they can do sculptures and things like that, you would think that maybe they also have talents in, in all the arts. And, and you said to me that painting wasn't your strongest point. You said painting, hmm, sculptures, much better. <laughs> so, <laughs> <can we? laughs> okay, so we're not going to look at your artwork because I know, I know it's not something... <laughs> Unless you want to show, I mean, we've seen some of your sketches. Your sketches are very good. I mean, you, you definitely have a, a good understanding of, of how things look when you do your sketches. But, but painting is not your, your, your main artistic form. Your, your main artistic form is obviously the cardboard. Um, and then, of course, Anne wanted to know if you use any social media besides Facebook. Are you using um, nothing else? Do you have your own YouTube uh, channel? Okay, so we, we're working on you. We're working on you. We're going to start collecting all your YouTube videos, that, that all the interviews and things that you've been doing, and we're going to start putting them into a YouTube channel. And then whenever you make your own little videos of how you make things, you put them straight into your YouTube channel. And then we can also put a link to that because I think that... Uh, that's going to be very popular. A lot of students and art teachers will want to learn more about how you actually do it. Because, I mean, you could show me how you do it, but there's no ways I'd be able to do it. Because you obviously have a very wonderful talent. So I'd just like to thank you so much for giving me and, and all of us your, your wonderful time, uh, your generous, generous uh, amount of time, because we know that uh, you're a busy guy. And we are very impressed with the wonderful work that you do. We thank you for helping us to inspire younger children to get more involved in the arts um, and to show them that from a mathematical point of view, 
that maths isn't always about numbers and sums, it's about problem solving, it's about design, it's about coming up with ideas, it's about creativity, and, and that's one of the reasons why we, we did this interview, to show people that you know there's so much more to maths than just numbers, there's, there's a lot more to it, and, and you've just shown us the most incredible examples of how we can apply ourselves and use problem solving in our everyday lives. So I thank you so, so much for your time and your energy. And and uh, how do you say thank you in Taiwanese? Xie xie. Thank you very much. And and thank you, Anne, for, for allowing your students to join in live. I know we have quite a few people watching it live on YouTube as well. So all the viewers who are watching it live on YouTube, thank you. And the best part is that people who missed this, this video is going to be on our YouTube channel. So we will share this video with uh, everyone and hopefully we will make you very famous. And then you're going to come to South Africa and see some real animals. That would be amazing. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much. And thank you, Brad, for joining us at 4 o'clock in the morning. And, and Anne, what time is it in Australia? Uh, the time is uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And, and uh, according to my calculations, it's probably going to be about 11 o'clock in the morning for Kai Xian, is that right? And right. Uh, <laughs> different places in America, I'm not sure what time they are sitting at. It's probably about in the evening, is that correct? I would assume that it's... Around 10, 11 maybe. 10, 11 in the evening for some of the teachers. So for those of you that join us, thank you very much. And we wish Kai Xian all the best of luck for all the wonderful work that you do. And I will email you all the pictures and the links and everything a little bit later on this morning. All right. So thank you so thank much. You. And bye-bye. Bye-bye. And now we're going to end the broadcast. Let's see.